Hello, everyone. Hey, how you doing, guys? <laughs> My name is Everlene, and this is Brandon Rutherford. And as promised, we are back with you with a video number two. Um, this is marriage quarantine tips to help during this time right now. Yep, yep. And, um, and today what we want to do is focus on giving your spouse grace. Um, we know that during this time, um, you know, we're in close quarters, all up on each other. <laughs> you wake up and you probably see that same person, <laughs> like, you know, and, you know, it, it's, you know, you're seeing the same faces and you're within close proximity. It's easy to get frustrated with each other. It's easy to, yes. you know, little things come up. Um, one of the things that we have to remember is that um, we have to extend grace to each other. Um, an absence of grace can lead to um, a lot of challenges in a marriage, um, a lot of challenges in a relationship in general. It really does. Yeah. So, um, you know, unfortunately, when we see those absences of, of grace being extended, um, it usually results in things like, you know, arguments, fights, and even divorce in a lot of situations. It really does. So today we're going to discuss three tips to help with extending grace in your marriage. So... Tip number one is we're going to help you define what is grace in your marriage. Yeah. So um, grace is essentially extending um, forgiveness, extending love, extending um, a, a desire for someone's well-being despite whether or not they deserve it. So um, we look at Christ's example. Christ, you know, we talk about how Christ died for the church, and this mm -hmm. is especially timely given that today's Palm it Sunday. Really, yes. um, but, you know, with Christ, you know, dying for the church, um, taking on the sins of the people, um, it was something that, you know, we didn't deserve, right? But he did it because he extended God's grace to us. So that way our slate would be wiped clean. And a good example of this is karma, how people define karma. Karma is giving someone what they deserve, but grace is not giving them what they deserve. It's like the exact opposite, right? It really is. Yeah. So that's an easy way to kind of break up what exactly grace is. Right, right. It's, it's, it's the exact of karma. So so even though your spouse may deserve that chewing out or they may deserve it, yeah. just don't do it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just don't do it. Just don't do it. So tip number two is adjust your expectations. Right now, with everything that's going on, the emotions, the state of this nation, adjust your expectations right now. So what you would have normally expected from your spouse or even yourself, just adjust those expectations. Right. We have different ways of coping. Yes. You know, uh, you've heard the word coping mechanisms. So uh, people deal with things in a different way. Um, they deal with adversity in a different way. Um, even when it comes to the dynamics of a couple, Everlene tends to uh, deal with things in a way where she might be more productive. Me, on the other hand, I may, um, you know, begin to change my routine a little bit. You know, there may be some things that I may not do as often as I did before. But, um, you know, everybody has their own way of dealing with things. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we adjust our expectations. Um, and extending grace is one way of doing that. If you notice, like when she gave the example of maybe someone not doing things that they were typically doing before, mm -hmm. if you notice that instead of um, maybe getting upset with that person and verbally showing it, maybe just kind of sit back and say, that might be the way that they are dealing with um, the ever-changing society. Everything is day by day changing on us. That may be their way of dealing with it. So adjust our expectations and what we expect from our spouse. And, and with that expectation adjustment, you have to realize you're supposed to be that safe place of refuge for your spouse. Right. You're supposed to be that person when they just feel like, oh, it's just so much going on, babe. Just, hey, just let's talk. Help me out. You don't want to be that person that's, ah, what are you doing? No, nah, stop. You know, just all on them right now. Air. <laughs> no, no, you no, don't no. want to be that person. You want to be that safe place of refuge. Right. Um, and with that is tip number three. Right now, do not nitpick on your spouse all day. You may be around them 24-7, but you don't want to just nitpick with everything that they're doing throughout the day. Mm -hmm. That would just lead to just being stuck in the house with a spouse, be it they're pointing out everything that you're doing wrong. I mean, I understand sometimes, you know, someone's chewing may get on my nerves, but... <laughs> when you get to the point where somebody's chewing, 
starts to really affect the way that you function and you just can't get through your day, that's where you realize, okay, let's reevaluate things. Let's bring right. it back in. Bring it back in. Yes. And when this happens, sometimes you have to realize, okay, maybe I need to step back. Maybe I just need some time to myself to just relax decompress you know just adjust or give each other space like we talked about in the right. last episode <laughs> <laughs> the last videos give, give right. each other space but you know you don't want to just be in a house with your spouse and nitpicking every little thing that they're doing the whole day mm -hmm. you know remember give your spouse some grace and also make sure that you're also forgiving them as well so just don't sit there and be like, ah, you know, make sure if they do something and they say, oh, I'm sorry, babe, please forgive me. Don't be like, I'm not going to forgive you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> grabbing that air again. She's grabbing that air. <laughs> no grabbing that air. But there is one scripture that I, I, I did want to bring up and I had to make, write it down to make sure I did not forget it. Um, and it's a scripture I, I really like. It's Proverbs 17 and 9. And it says, love prospers when a fault is forgiven. But dwelling on, sepa dwelling on it separates close friends. That's good. So basically it's saying forgiveness prospers you and dwelling on it can separate you. And that's the easy breakdown of that. And I apply that to a marriage. You know, make sure that you're quick to forgive. Um, often people have said that people in good, long-lasting marriages, they're great forgivers. And that's true. You have to be good at forgiving each other. And... Mm -hmm. And I've often told people that I've had to sit down and talk to about marriages is you have to remember you're not perfect. Your spouse is not perfect either. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we place our spouse on this thing where they have to do everything right, everything perfect, but yet we don't. And the moment that they're not perfect or don't do something that they're supposed to do, then it's like, oh, I can't believe this. And you want to have a fit and it's realize yeah. everyone has their own faults. You know, that, that is who makes them that them as well mm -hmm. so just make sure that you're extending some grace right, right now right and to just wrap it up um i just want to uh, point out that just like with everything else marriage takes work it does um and, and along with that work it's going to take some intention right uh, we're talking about these tips but the only way that someone will apply them is if they intend on applying them so you have to be mindful that hey, these are things that I want to do. These are things I'm going to make sure that I do mm -hmm. in order to make sure that my marriage stays intact, especially exactly. during these times of challenges. Exactly. So we appreciate you tuning mm -hmm. in with us. Um, if you have any tips or anything that you want us to cover next, please hit us in our inbox or comment below. Thank you. Thanks, and guys. until next time, bye-bye. Bye-bye.